Hi, well, it's Dr. Fox. And in this video, what I want to talk about is addictive crushes. And someone wrote me in a comment on one of the videos, and I thought it was really interesting and something that, you know, I certainly want to explore and something I think a lot of folks deal with who are along that BPD spectrum or those who have BPD traits. And it's something that could certainly happen. So I thought, you know what, let's break it down. Let's get into it, things to think about and how to deal with it. So here we go. Like, share, and subscribe. I appreciate that. It helps to support the channel. That's awesome. And let's get into it. So you know when you meet someone and you think that they're just the cat's pajamas. They're the end-all be-all of everything you ever wanted in a person. And when we first meet that person, it's this intensive honeymoon phase and they're really exciting and they have new stories and new ideas and all kinds of really cool, interesting stuff about them. But we also have to be cautious. We have to be aware of that tendency to fall in and misperceive who that person is, what they're about, and their value. And I think in doing that, it's so important that we explore the fantasy first and what that means to you. And in doing that, I think that we have to take a look at what your core content is, what that interpersonal need is for you. And I think once you have that understanding, that can be really helpful because I think now we know what that internal motivator is. And that doesn't mean that that person isn't exciting. It doesn't mean that that person isn't maybe a great fit for you. But we want to take a look at the addictive crush component. And is that related to core content? Is that related to some BPD, perhaps some of those classic core content issues of abandonment, emptiness, relationship needs, safety needs? These are all really common. So when we first meet that person, what I want you to do first is I want you to slow down. I want you to assess what evidence there is that this person is all that. And do they fit into your fantasy assessment, right? We want to add some reality, some concrete facts into that assessment of who this person is and what they're all about. Now, in these situations, right, when you first meet that person, it's the honeymoon phase, it's super exciting and all of that other stuff. I think we have to ask ourselves and be on the lookout for what's called erotomania. And this is when an individual falsely believes that another person is in love with him or her, or that they are intensely in love with them without really knowing them. And it's this intense fixation on that person, that this person is going to make your life perfect and be that missing puzzle piece that's going to make everything perfect and everything okay. And I know that this can be tough, as a lot of folks kind of deal with this and it builds up with the excitement quickly and you have this honeymoon phase that can be really intensive, but we have to apply the reality filter because without the reality filter it can be really, really distorted as to who that person is, what their value is, and do they genuinely fit into your life? And that's so important. So let's say that you realize this person isn't all that. Doesn't mean they're terrible, right? We don't want to split. But it doesn't mean they're terrible, but maybe they're not all that. They're not the cat's pajamas. Maybe they're not. So I want you to resist the urge to turn on yourself and engage in self-attack. That, that would not be appropriate. Don't blame yourself. See, I'm not good enough if I was a better person, if I was different, if I was this, that, this, you know, another thing. Whatever it is, then I would be a better fit. Whoa, that's self-attack. We don't want to do that because this is not about your value as a person, but it is about the need to connect and find that person who can help you better understand yourself. This is where you have to kind of learn and build your sense of self-compassion. And you have to embrace the reality that you have to take care of yourself and love yourself to be loved by another. I know it's a cliche, but there's a reason why a cliche is a cliche, right? Because there's some truth to it sometimes, right? And I think this is one where there is some truth to it. I think it's really important. And addictive crushes can turn your world upside down, right? Being able to understand them while engaging in self-control so you don't get hurt and encourage those maladaptive patterns, which we don't want to do. We don't want that expectation, that addictive crush. So you turn it on yourself. It's self-attack, right? And then those maladaptive patterns come out. And we don't want to do that because it's so critical to learn self-compassion, to learn that sense of appreciation for yourself and build it and embrace it. 
and apply that reality filter as best you can. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe, and please take care. Bye-bye.